What's up everyone, welcome to Essential Style. Today I have six ways that intermittent fasting can help you. Now I've been doing intermittent fasting for a long time, at least five years, if not closer to 10 years. I have to sit down and actually check when I actually started, but it has absolutely helped me stay lean this is, I'm nice and lean right now. I'm just at 200 pounds. In the past three or four months, I've lost about 12 pounds. And it also helps me build muscle as well, believe it or not. So without further ado, let's get ahead and go on to those six ways. By the way, I'm looking at my notes just to make sure that I don't miss anything. So number one is it helped me snack a lot less. Now, I used to be one of those people that I always felt like I had to eat every two or three hours because way back in the day, 12, 15 years ago, that's what everyone thought. You have to snack, you have to keep your metabolism high, right? You can't go three, four, five hours because then your metabolism is gonna slow down and you're gonna store fat. That was the belief. Enter intermittent fasting when it got popular back around that time. A lot of people found that, no, that's actually just a myth. So once I started to do intermittent fasting, I actually snacked a lot less. It actually taught me that, hey, like I don't need to just go grab a Snickers or grow, go grab a bake grow wrap or go grab a bagel or go grab a buttered roll or anything just because I haven't eaten in three or four hours. If anything, a glass of water, a cup of coffee or a cup of decaf, depending on the time of day and how much coffee I had that day would suffice and I was able to just save my hunger and then just wait till I could actually have a decent meal as opposed to just running to whatever is across the street like a McDonald's or a Wendy's or like I said a candy bar from 7-Eleven or a Snickers or what have you. So definitely has helped me snack a whole lot less. All right, now tip number two is it has helped me be patient and wait for a good meal rather than just eat what's right in front of me because I'm hungry. I alluded to this before, but it's just helped me be really patient and just wait for it. So like I was just saying, instead of looking and seeing what's around the corner, if there's a 7-Eleven right there, if there's a Taco Bell or a Wendy's or even a Chipotle right there, Chipotle is not that bad. It's actually pretty decent for fast food, but it helped me just be patient and wait until I could actually get home and eat a good healthy meal or help me that, you know, if, let's say I was super hungry, but I knew eating Taco Bell wouldn't be good for me, or I knew eating a Hershey bar wouldn't be great for me either, or having a soda wouldn't be great for me either. It really just helped me be patient and just wait about a half an hour to an hour until I could get closer to a more healthier option, whether that is Chipotle, like we just said, or going home and eating more of like a whole food, less processed type of meal. All right, and the third tip is willpower. It has absolutely helped my willpower. It has helped me say no to myself. A lot of times, if we, when we get hungry, we think we gotta eat right now. It's instant gratification, if you think about it. It's our body wants something, our brain wants something, we have to go find it right away. I've told myself no, and if you can tell yourself no, you might find that your willpower is going to get a heck of a lot stronger. And this is definitely something that I have experienced and I'm really grateful for it. Because I'm telling myself, hey, I feel hungry, but I've just gotta wait, and then I can wait four, five, six hours to my next meal. It's also helped me with just saying no to buying new bikes, buying new shoes, buying new shirts, buying new watches, buying things I don't need and eating things that I don't need. And this can definitely help you as well and definitely help Help you get a stronger willpower with just saying no to yourself because then you'll just be less wasteful. And number four is it helped me cut back on calories. I am one of the people that believe in calories in versus calories out. If you want to burn more fat or you want to lose weight, you have to be in a caloric deficit. So if you eat 2000 calories, you got to be able to lower that 2000 calories by either number one, eating less or number two, going to burn more calories. This is the reason why everyone gets nice and lean in the summertime when they're out walking around, moving around. We don't even realize that we're burning less or we're burning more calories rather, so we are in a caloric deficit. And then when the fall and winter come and we move around a lot less, maybe we're driving a lot more, maybe we're not going on our bike rides, not going on our walks, our weight starts to creep up because we're no longer in a caloric deficit. We're now in a caloric surplus. That's the word, surplus. I was looking for that word a couple of weeks ago. So it's definitely helped me, especially in the fall and winter months when I'm not moving as much, I'm not going outside as much. I still go to the gym quite a bit and I ride my bikes as much as I can, but it's definitely helped me keep the calories a lot lower. And it also just, it helps that way if I do have a big meal or if I do go out, I can still not go overboard by five, 500 or 1,000 calories. I'm just overboard by a couple of hundred calories, which in turn means that I'm just taking in less calories overall. So pretty much no brainer on this one. The less you eat means the less calories you're taking in, which also means the skinnier and leader you're gonna be. Right, now the fifth way it's actually helped me is it's helped me get back on that bandwagon when I've fallen off. Bandwagon meaning my fitness goals, my health goals, going out there trying to be lean, trying to build muscle. 
we all fall off the bandwagon sometimes. Whether we go and we eat a whole bunch of fast food or a bunch of sweets or a bunch of fatty food, especially around the holidays, it can be tough to just stay super focused and super strict on our diet and nutrition. But what I've found is, let's say I have a day where I just go off the rails. I eat Burger King and then Taco Bell and have three or four beers and then soda and then Hershey's Kisses and I just, I have a day where I just eat bonkers amount of calories. Well, then the next few days, I can actually go a bit harder than I normally do on fasting. And it actually does help me because I already know, I've proven to myself that I can fast till three, four, sometimes even five o'clock. And that means that my first or second meal, I'm only going to probably be taking in like 12 to 1500 calories, as opposed to if I only fast until 12 o'clock, I'm probably taking in closer to 2,000, 2,500 calories. It's been a while since I actually sat there and you know, looked at what I'm actually eating every single day. I just really go by feel and go by how the scale tells me. But this definitely has helped me get back on the bandwagon a lot faster, especially after I've fallen off the bandwagon, I feel kind of a bit down. Just doing intermittent fasting for a bit longer into the day, into the late afternoon, early evening, definitely helps me get back in the bag wagon and it just boosts my confidence. And then a week later, I'm right back to where I started, right back on track. All right, and for number six, this is going to be, it has given me more energy throughout the day, especially in the morning. Now, one thing that I've learned with intermittent fasting for the past almost decade is I'm the type of person, I don't like to eat when I first wake up. A cup of coffee, a couple of cups of water, sometimes two cups of coffee and like a cup or two water, depending on what I'm doing and how far I'm going to be from the bathroom that day. That is what makes me feel really good. Not only do I feel leaner, I feel more alert. I feel more awake. Of course, the coffee does that as well. But back when I used to eat, when I first woke up, I would feel a bit sluggish around 9, 10 o'clock. And I have to say it was probably because I was eating a lot of sugary cereals or I was eating more fat. And now my body actually had to start to work a bit harder to digest that food, which meant I was a little bit more foggy, a little bit more tired. This is something I remember when I first started fasting, I just... Remember, it was like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I think there was one day that I didn't really, I only got like four or five hours of sleep, and I normally would just be really tired in the morning, but I was wide awake until 1 or 2 o'clock, and I actually ate something that was a bit too big, and then I got sleepy. Plus, I was, you know, didn't sleep a lot the night before, but I actually vividly remember that from years and years ago, how it made me feel a lot more clear and a lot more wide awake in the morning. And I was just able to think more clearly. It's like all the brain fog was gone. So that's it. Six ways intermittent fasting has helped me and I'm sure it could help you too. So definitely give it a shot. I think you're gonna like the results. If you like to eat early in the morning, that's totally fine. Everyone's different. I just wanted to share my experience and it's definitely worked for me. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Reminder to consider subscribing if you like the content we're putting out here. Totally free. That being said, again, thanks for watching. See you in the next one, probably tomorrow. Have a great one.